So, it's confirmed then. The Marita map, the second Greek map for Battlefield 5, will now be releasing before Al Sundan on Conquest. The large vehicle focused desert map, Al Sundan, set in North Africa, still isn't ready for prime time. The DICE team is still unable to solve the artifacting issues that were discovered just after fixing the game breaking crash that the map had, which was the initial reason that the launch of that map was delayed. June 27th, that was supposed to be the launch day for Al Sundan, but unfortunately, it'll be close to a month later that the map scheduled to go live after it will now go live before it. So, yet again, another really strange situation for Battlefield 5. For a while now, I have been saying, of course, that it is preferable that content is delayed, fixed, and then released, rather than those bugs making their way into the game, spoiling that new content, and, in general, making people feel angry or upset about that content. We have had a really rough ride so far with Battlefield 5 and I think we can all agree that the game doesn't need any more bad press and it doesn't need any more broken updates. What this game needs is a good solid update that delivers something new and something fun for the community to grab onto, which looks set to now be that Marita map coming in the next week or so. This upcoming patch, it has been cooking for a little bit longer than normal for Battlefield 5, with DICE deciding to push it back so that the team can check in more bug fixes and they can try and target more issues into one patch rather than delivering lots of smaller patches that may not address some of the more pressing issues that the game is facing at the moment. And although it might be frustrating that the content we all want to be playing isn't arriving as scheduled, hopefully when it does actually arrive, it arrives without any issues. But I do think it has to be said that while this supposed recent admission from the development team that perhaps the speed they were working at wasn't really sustainable because they've been delivering a lot of patches that introduced more bugs than they fixed, should it really have taken this long after the launch of Battlefield 5 for that to be realised? I mean, we've had plenty of patches before the last few that have broken more than they'd fixed, but those ones didn't get pushed back as much as this one. So why has it taken this long for that to be realised? I think it was back in August 2018, maybe early September 2018, I'm not 100% sure, but it was around that time that DICE and EA publicly stated that Battlefield 5 was being delayed. And the reason that was given at the time was to smooth out the product and to give the team a little bit more time to polish things off. Which, if you look at the current state of Battlefield 5, that seems like quite a hollow statement. And when the game launched that month later as well, the statement was somewhat hollow then as well, because when the game did launch, it was still quite buggy. And clearly the extra time that had been allowed, it just... Well, it, it wasn't enough time to clear up the issues that were present at that point. And then ever since launch, the development team has been working tirelessly to try and bring new content to the game, as well as clear up the issues that either continue to remain present in the game or continue to be introduced with every single update. It really does seem that the speed of Battlefield 5's pre-launch development and then the speed now that the development team is trying to patch the game is coming at quite a high price. And that price is reduced quality and reduced stability. And there is a lack of consistency with the updates coming to Battlefield 5 as well. Content is being scheduled, patches are being scheduled, and then they're being delayed. That doesn't help either. But there is one thing that I will say, the development team will be just as frustrated, just as disappointed as we are with the state of Battlefield 5 at the moment. I know it's really easy as a gamer on the outside to just say developers are lazy when a patch doesn't work or giving Battlefield 5 to another development team is going to fix the problems. That simply isn't the case, it really isn't that easy to fix all of these problems. That said though, this situation is highlighting that there is something wrong at the moment with the development process or something inside the studio. There's something not quite working around Battlefield 5. If it was working, we wouldn't have this scenario where patches break more than they fix. So clearly, something isn't quite right at the moment. But I think that the worst thing about this current situation for Battlefield 5 is that there are some players out there that have just reached the end of their tether now. They've had enough of this situation and they don't want to deal with it anymore, so they're not playing Battlefield 5 anymore. 
I remember before the launch of the game that there were lots of players in the community, despite the polarizing marketing, despite the mishandling of the campaign and the controversy surrounding the general direction of the game when it came to that World War II setting, there were still a lot of players that were very excited for Battlefield 5. A lot of people were willing to place all of those issues to one side because the underlying game was one that they were excited to play and it did offer a decent step forward from games like Battlefield 1 in terms of gameplay opportunity and mechanics, and that was despite it looking fairly visually similar. We had an advanced movement set to look forward to, the introduction of fortifications. They would change the way that maps would play, and they would allow players to directly have control over map flow. We had deep visual customization for our soldiers, our weapons and vehicles. For the first time in the franchise, we had a gunplay system built around recoil rather than spread, making situations more readable. There was a lot to look forward to for Battlefield 5 before the launch. But now, eight months later, those same exciting points are very much being tarnished. The game's poor performance and almost relentless stream of bugs and glitches, they've become the number one topic of discussion. We're even making memes about patches now, wondering how many new bugs the game's gonna have after the patch goes live. We're talking about that instead of being excited and looking forward to the new content that should be releasing. These bugs, they just simply frustrate players and they make people angry. And in the case of Battlefield 5, I'd go and far as say they're stopping people from playing the game. The Invisible Soldiers bug is one that makes me want to Alt F4 the game quite often, I'm not going to lie. Because I'm being killed by people I can't see and it's unfair to continue playing and being subjected to that really. It's not very fun to play Battlefield 5 at the moment and it pains me to say that because I'm one of those people that was within the community that looked past all of the controversies surrounding the game. The wacky cosmetics, the alternative take on World War II, the poor marketing, the mishandling of the product by high-level EA executives before launch. I can look beyond all of that and I can play a game as long as it works well and it runs smoothly. As much as Battlefield Hardline wasn't my favourite Battlefield game, it was a solid, stable game that worked well and ran smoothly at launch without major bugs ruining the gameplay experience. That game had a fair amount of controversy around it, but the underlying game was solid and it was decent fun to play. But right now, the same cannot be said for Battlefield 5. I know a lot of people that decided to continue playing Battlefield 5 despite all of the controversies that surrounded it leading up to and just after its launch, but now quite a lot of those people are pretty much done with this game because the bugs and issues have become so common, so frequent during gameplay that it's just not fun for them to play this game anymore. They have no desire to continue playing a game that frustrates them every single time they boot it up and adding to that, they don't know what experience they're going to have each time they play it. And this kind of feeds back into the update frequency and update quality topic that we were discussing earlier. If the dedicated players of Battlefield 5 that look past all of the controversies, if they see a new patch deployed for the game, chances are they're going to boot up the game once it's installed and they're going to try it out, but if that update doesn't actually improve the product, then they're just as quickly going to turn the game off again. Even if a new patch is dropping for the game every two to three weeks, if the experience of the last couple of patches has been relatively bad, even those dedicated players will just stop caring regardless of how quickly the patches come out. If the previous few patches haven't helped, what's the guarantee that this next one is going to help? There has to be a focus on quality over quantity. If that means that Battlefield 5 is updated less frequently, but the patches themselves deliver quality content and they solve outstanding bugs without introducing new ones, then right now that has to be the direction that DICE and EA take. If there's any hope for Battlefield 5 to regain what credibility it can, it has to start by being put back into good working shape by the team supporting it. Once that happens, then I think the team might have a chance of turning this ship around. But frankly, most of that ship has now sailed, which is really unfortunate. To me, at the moment, the state of Battlefield 5 right now, it solidifies my opinion that the game simply wasn't ready to be released back in November, and ever since then the team has just been fighting to please the community that are playing the game and to try and finish the work that should really have been done before the launch. And it's easy to talk about this with the beauty of hindsight, but perhaps not releasing Battlefield 5 
until 2019, that might have been the best option for EA and DICE. In early 2018, Battlefield 1 still had a very healthy player base, and I think it could have had its support life extended for a further 12 months, mimicking what was done with Battlefield 4 back in 2015. Had Battlefield 1 support been extended into 2018 and then early 2019, perhaps taking the same route that Battlefield 4 did, working directly with the community, maybe creating some content, maybe a couple of maps through a community map project, a few fan favourite weapons, whatever it happens to be, to cover that 12 month period, perhaps that extra support might have provided the DICE team the time that they needed to properly bed in features for what would have been Battlefield 5, to polish off the product and then get it ready for a 2019 release. I don't know, it's just something that I thought about since the launch of Battlefield 5 and really me saying this now isn't going to change much, but perhaps a lesson can still be learned. If you rush things, nothing really good ever comes of it. Battlefield 5 is probably, at the moment, the greatest example of that. But that's just about me done for this video. Hopefully, with the Marita map launching in the next week or so, we're going to have some new content very soon that we can play with. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. I know this is always a controversial topic, and I love hearing what you guys have got to say. So if you have anything to say, leave it down below in the comments. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.